men growing out their hair versus buzzing it. Like I, I feel like there's grow, a big uh, Please grow. Uh, yeah? You think, yeah, what about that weird in between stage? I like, what about the molting stage where like, it's not long enough for a top knot. It's just kind of like this. So what? We all have it in the middle, a middle stage. It's just, with, geez, I did. We all do, let's like, just do it. I mean, cause I feel like we all know what most people look like with a buzzed head. Right? Obviously, I'm sure people are like turning to you or thinking about what they want to do vis-a-vis -vis grooming inside during the quarantine. What should people be doing? I think everyone is going to handle this in different ways and they're going to want to feel different ways. If you, if it really makes you feel more, you know, at peace in this situation to do a full face of glam on a daily basis, even if you're not going somewhere, do it. <laughs> uh, never had the time to get into it before and now you do have time and you have the resources to do that go for it um but if you don't want to and it doesn't make you feel good and this is and you've and you've been someone who's doing that a lot and you want to take a break that's okay i just think everyone is really trying to navigate their way through all this and yeah what are you doing personally at the beginning i think i was a little bit like oh my gosh i don't have to blow dry my hair i don't have to you know, do, I had just been filming, I had just been on tour and I'd also just kind of been on the back of being on two years of like nonstop, go, go, go. And so I was, I was kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna let my hair air dry and not have to worry about it right now. And then in the last couple of weeks, I'm like, oh my God, I miss doing hair. Have you and cut your own? Yeah, I did like a little bit of a fringe trim on myself with Emily Hampshire the other day. We want to make this a you. So yeah. you know, like kind of a you. Okay. Okay. So I wanted to see if I could ask you a few like sort of lightning roundy type questions about what people should do. Do you think people should be covering grays right now or just like let it ride? Okay. I don't know the legality around this, but if you're a colorist that you have a normal relation or a regular relationship with can like get you your color and like that cute little bag and then you can like Venmo them and like get some contact list, pick it up and mix it up so that you're just, I just don't want you to put box color on your hair if you've not been doing that. Cause again, I just don't want you to get into the, into the thing. So yes. Yeah, and I mean, what would you say to like, I mean, this is a classic sort of like queer eye question, but it's like to straight men who are starting to experiment growing out their hair and they're like, maybe should I put it in clips? Should I put it up? If they want to get it off their face, should they be wearing headbands? I also don't think that this is a heterosexual specific question. I think that there's like lots of like homosexual to asexual to bisexual and pansexual people who are growing out their hair and women for that matter, who maybe have had short hair and maybe I think everyone could use it. I love the following things for growing out your hair. And I'm gonna do it as a lightning round. A lightweight yeah. summer hat. You need a lightweight summer hat. Sometimes you just don't have time to deal and you just can't even do it. So you just need that good old fashioned lightweight summer Wait, hat. It's a lightweight summer hat, like a, a bucket hat? Is, I like to do kind of like a beanie, but it's extremely light. It's like, you know, t-shirt material. You wanna see mine? Yes, you could also even do a bucket hat. I'm, I'm living my like fly girl fantasy. Love. Love that. You just need like a lightweight summer hat that you can rely on. You look so cute in this hat. I love it. Thank you. Um, also, uh, I also loved a headband. I loved like a fierce, you know, just a, a fierce headband. You just want to be careful. But I feel like you risk like really looking like Josh Brolin in the Goonies. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> Last beauty question is how are we feeling about eyebrow maintenance in quarantine? That is, I feel really firm about letting that grow. Mm. That is like such a slippery slope, you know? Next thing you know, there's like three survivors and you don't know what happened and... You're just Louise Brooks, just like... Yes, that. Just, just don't. I mean, and then, you know, generally like, that's only like a 15 minute appointment and I'm no scientist, but I just feel like, I feel better about a brow. Like, I mean, you're in and out, like, and you're gone, you know? Like, just wait. Brows take forever to grow back. So, what's happening at your the salon right now? It's, it's closed, right? I think they are closed, but I know that like all my hairdresser friends in LA and New York are definitely not working. What are people gonna do now that are in that profession to survive? Well, in the future, that's I think that there's gonna be a much bigger premium on like stylist time. As we're seeing new regulations for how salons are gonna function in a post-coronavirus world, it's like, you know, no blow dries and like no more dry haircuts. And like, I think, and obviously like not packing in, like we won't be able to do someone while you have your color processing, which like I was the queen of that. And I think all of us are the queen of that because that's what we have to do like with raising demand and like how expensive right. everything is. Right, multitasking, like, getting exactly. people in the door, yeah. This is going to cause 
like prices just to go up in hair salons. When you can finally get back to queer eye, who knows when that will be, probably next year, right? Something like that. But like, have you th thought about how this experience is going to affect the advice that you give people at all? But this idea that, or what you bring to the show is that like, the internal transformation can be matched by an external transformation, right? Or that there's something where they're in dialogue with one another in yeah. some essential way, right? How are people transforming, especially when their external maybe isn't being transformed as much or they don't have the opportunity to be seen or appraised or that kind of thing? Okay, so I obviously love to do hair and I love to do a transformation yeah. times. Um, but I feel like my passion and my role is more about accepting who we are and embracing mm. who we are. I think I'm kind of like the, I'm a lot of times more of like the anti-transformation, like beauty expert. Like I really want to, I'm always like, well, why do we want to change it? Like, why do you want to shave off your beard? And like, let's talk about it. I know I'm definitely feeling like sometimes I just want to make a lot of Rice Krispie treats or give myself fringe. So I know that I'm experiencing like some impulsivity from all of this alone time. And I think that that is going to affect people, but I want to empower people to love themselves and accept themselves and see some of the things that are going on around us and love ourselves anyway. Do you think there are new opportunities for that now that everyone is alone with themselves so much? Yeah. But I also feel like I still want validation from others even when I'm isolated. So I feel like we still, I think that's still like a little human too. But I yeah. do think that this will hopefully foster people having a better relationships with themselves.